champion of the world. He had lost that uh, uh, title because he had refused to go and join the American army and fight in Vietnam. He came to Ireland to fight a man called Al Blue Lewis, not a bad boxer. And indeed, he beat Al Blue Lewis, but Al Blue Lewis gave him quite a good fight. John Condon, one of our producer directors, suggested that we should try to get Muhammad Ali to do uh, an almost hour-long interview with us. And to our great surprise, he agreed. We paid him a hundred pounds in used boncers and got a wonderful and absolutely magnificent interview with him, far better than we had expected. Here's the man again. Why is it, do you think, that, that you draw the crowds uh, of all the sportsmen in the world, that you are well, a mainly, great crowd drawer? Mainly personality has got a lot to do with it, of, of personality. Like a salesman's business depends entirely on his personality. If he's rude and unsympathetic, and and then the buyer will hope that he goes away and never come back. But very often, if the salesman is good, he can make a person buy when they don't even intend to. Same with a doctor; he might be the uh, the best of doctors. He might have many patients and give them all the medicine he wants. But if his personality is not really right, then like. Uh, his medicine won't make him feel that good, his personality will make him feel worse. But very often, a wise doctor can cure a person with word of mouth alone because they realize power of mind is needed. And a, doc a lawyer can dishearten a client on one visit if you don't have a personality of victory. Like Joe Frazier, for an example, he's the champion, they say. Number one, he don't have the personality. He can't talk. Very few boxers can get on this show and match wits with wise men like yourself. Mm. And, uh, Wit, wits plus, is all I want to match with you. <laughs> and very few fighters, if you take the camera on close up, you see my nose and my face. I'm not ugly. <laughs> I'm not ugly like most fighters. They have nose like that and their ears are like that. <laughs> How do you feel, champ? <laughs> 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 I'm pretty. I'm a pretty fighter. And like I can, you know, I have a personality. I know how to talk to the wine heads. I have a talk for the, uh, your great Mr. Lynch here in the Parliament House. And I knew how to talk to, to uh, men like you with less intelligence than myself. And <laughs> <laughs> no, it's only joking. Just listen to the people Joke laugh. Away. <laughs> Just listen to the people laugh. Just listen to them laugh. Very few comedians can do this, and that's their job. So like I'm saying, it's personality that attracts. I mean, people of all religions, like in America, I stand up for black people, and regardless of what it costs me, I speak out for what I believe, like you got people in Ireland fighting for what they believe. I represent this. Also, the draft was something out of my religion to teach against, and this made me popular with many people. Then you got the white races who believe in separation, such as I believe one day the black people in America must go to self, clean up self, help self, do for self, I recognize them. Then you got all the Muslims in Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, Syria, Lebanon, India, all throughout Kuwait, uh, Abu Dhabi, all throughout Libya. They all recognize me because of the name Muhammad Ali. And you add all of this up, all I represent, and then my confidence. I am the greatest. I cannot lose. I'm pretty. And every man believes he's the greatest. Every man will like to be the greatest. Many want to say this, but they fear it. And they see this in myself, and some hate me for it, and some love me for it. So add it all up, and we have a large crowd. <laughs> well, Joe Frazier's ugly, he's flat-footed, he can't talk, he can't sing, he can't fight, and no he personality. No, he's a slugger, street fighter. Why do you he's think... Not, Joe Frazier's not... Don't get me wrong. Joe Frazier's good with his face. He's not skillful. Joe Frazier's known for taking a lot of punches. He's not like Floyd Patterson, or say Sugar Ray Robinson, or Joe Lewis, or say Jack Johnson, Jack Dempsey. These are great scientific boxers. See, Joe well, Frazier will take five punches to hit you once. So why, do you think, why do you think he beat you, Muhammad, then, the last time? Well, the reason uh, that he got the decision, if you looked at my face and his face after the fight, both eyes were closed, his nose was blood, his lips was cut, his head was swollen, and he spent one month in the hospital. Did you all hear? Yeah, surely. He spent 30 days of intensive care. No phone calls and no visitors. I mean, that's a terrible beating when you have to stay <laughs> rest for 30 days. But he got the decision. But I'm not complaining. Next time, I'll get him. I played too much with him. And plus, I at the time I was bucking the draft system, I didn't go to the service. And I found out the three of the judges was on the local draft board. That's what I was. We'll come back to that if we can in just a moment. But could we sort of go right to the beginning of your career? 
What made you take up boxing as a child in Louisville? Well, at 12 years old, someone stole my bicycle. I went to a home show with the display cars and refrigerators and household utensils and everything. And I went there and left my bicycle outside and came out. It was a drizzling rain that night and Saturday evening by 9 o'clock. The bicycle was gone. I just got it for Christmas. Somebody asked me, I asked one of the nearest police officer, and they said in the basement, the same building that I just came out, and a fellow named Joe Martin was training amateur boxers in a room about this size. And um, he asked me to take out an application and learn how to fight so I can beat the fell up in joking fashion. He stole my bicycle. So, so I started boxing. This led you on eventually to, to uh, the Olympics. Was this your goal, as a, I mean, as a, as a child and as a young man? Did you see that the best thing you could ever do was, was to be an Olympic champion? I knew nothing about Olympics when I started, nothing. I just boxed just to get on the local television show called Tomorrow's Champions. Every week at Saturday in Louisville, Kentucky, we have a show called Tomorrow's Champions. And uh, you've heard of the Kentucky Derby. Sure. That's where they have the races where I live. I live across the street from where they have the race every year. Anyway, I just wanted to get on local television, and I found out how good I was, and I <laughs> kept on fighting. People say I'm conceited I talk too much, but they must have pity on me. It's hard to be humble when you're as great as I am. <laughs> I won the Golden Gloves, the National AAU, and the Olympics. And then after the Olympics, I had all the gold medals, but no money. Okay. So you, I turned you, professional. You, you told a story uh, on one occasion about coming back uh, from the Olympics with the medal uh, to your own hometown. Did this make you a very big man in your own hometown? Did it completely change your life? Well, you know, like, uh, made me popular for a few days, but I wanted to do something good with it. So I went downtown. At the time, black people was marching to eat in the white restaurants, and they wanted rights to go where they wanted to. And so I said, I'll take this medal, and I'll go downtown, and I'll sit down in a restaurant. I got them on the spot now, and then I'll order something to eat. And I went down, and I had my medal on, and the lady was looking. And I said, I'd like a cheeseburger. She said, we don't serve Negroes. I said, I don't eat them either. Just give me a cheeseburger. <laughs> anyway. how, how was it, Mohammed, anyway, to be a, a, a Negro boy in the South? You uh, say black now. You know, all right, black. All right. All right. Uh, did, did, is it not the same thing? What? No, Negro. We are taught that all people are named after country. Chinese are named after China. Cubans are named after Cuba, uh, Irish people are named after Ireland, Indonesians are named after Indonesia, Japanese are named after Japan, Australians are named after Australia, but, but there's no country named Negro. Mm -hmm. All right, then let me... You understand? I understand. You're let not me as let dumb me let as you look. Let me rephrase. <laughs> <laughs> Do I look that dumb? No, I'm <laughs> What I really mean is, did you feel that you were deprived that you and your family and, and other blacks were second-class citizens. Did we feel it? We knew it. Not only second-class, but about mm -hmm. add up all the nationalities you have on Earth, and then they come first. Like, right now, you can come to my town, and you're more free in America than I am. Even the Chinese, or the Japanese, that the black people help America to fight, or even the Germans. A day after the war in Vietnam, the Viet Cong will be more of a citizen than the American Negro. So, like, we might be the 50 class citizens, 60 class, if you really break it down. Second, if we were just second class, we'd be all right. This is something you feel very strongly strongly, about. Strongly. I know it's the truth. Mm -hmm. I live right there every day. F what attracted you then to Islam in the first instance? The Muslim religion? Yes. It's the true teachings of Elijah Muhammad right there in America, and the power structure, nobody will challenge him. And the history of ourselves, the history of our true religion, our nationality, our names. See, we don't have our names, you know. I notice how proud you all are, proud of your names. See, Chinese have names like Chang Chong, Lu Chen, this is Islamic teaching. Russians have names like Kosygin or Khrushchev. You have names like O'Connor or Grady or Kennedy. And uh, Africans have names like Lumumba, Nkrumah. And Jews got names like Weinstein and Goldberg and, 
and Italians got names like Dundee and Benvenuti and Marciano. <laughs> but we have names like Grady and Clay and Hawkins and Smith and Jones and Johnson, but we are black. These so, are the slave names. Yeah, this so the, when I heard this, I knew it was the truth. It's history. So Muhammad Ali is a beautiful black name, name of our ancestors. So when I heard this, I just had to walk out of the church and Christianity because they never taught us our true knowledge. Then they told me how we were brainwashed in America. We see Jesus, he's white with blonde hair and blue eyes. We see the Lord's Supper, all white people. We see the angels in heaven, all white people. And we look at Miss Universe, a white woman, Miss America, a white woman, Miss World, a white woman, even Tarzan, the king of the jungles in Africa. He was white. He said, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. We see. We see. A white man swinging in Africa, oh, 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 with a diaper on, oh, oh, oh. He beats up all Africans and breaks the lines, y'all. And the Africans been in Africa for centuries, but he can't yet talk to the animals. But Tarzan, all of a sudden, some goat raised him up, and he can talk to the animals. So I'm just showing you how the black man in America has been whitewashed man. And then we look at the good cowboys, they rode the white horses, and the president live in a white house. They got TV commercials, white house cigars, white swan soap, king white soap, white cloud tissue paper, white rain hair is, white tornado flow wax, white plus toothpaste. The president live in a white house and, and the angel food cake was the white cake, but the devil food cake was the chocolate cake. <laughs> everything good was white. And when I heard this, I said, boy, this is the truth. So our religion teaches us the knowledge of ourselves, the knowledge of our culture, the knowledge of our history makes us want to be with our own, marry our own, live with our own, clean up ourselves, do for self, quit forcing ourselves in white neighborhoods, but clean our own neighborhoods, makes us proud, makes us identify with our own brothers throughout the world. And after I heard this, being an intelligent man, then like I'm not only a winner in boxing or my stand on the draft, I'm a winner also in the movement that I follow for my people. And the only leader is Elijah Muhammad, who we believe was taught by Allah, God himself, to teach the so-called American Negroes the truth that's been hidden from them for 400 years, which will free them. You yourself have, uh, have some little white blood in you. Yeah, what are you saying? You, you, feel, you feel totally Negro, or do you feel... Black? Yeah. Well, uh, nobody is really totally. Like Chinese are yellow, they say, but they're not really yellow. You, they say, you white. Give me something white. You don't look white. Here's white. See, this is white. You're not white. You're kind of pinky. Okay. You're not white. <laughs> See, that's oh, white. white. Right. So I'm not black, but I'm considered black. But as far as the blood is concerned, some people say, you talk so bad about us in America. You have white blood in you. How did I get white blood in me? Well, you know Way course, right? back a right. hundred and something years ago, the old slave master's wife used to get tired. And he would sneak back in old granny's shack. And old granny had big hips, so she was pretty and had a big breast and big legs, and she was strong. She worked all day to clean up the white lady's house, raise the white lady's babies, and the old white lady was tired and weak, and old black slave was back there all strong, and he would slip back at night and close the door. And you know what he would do? I can guess. You can guess what he would do. And then... <laughs> And then here come me, half black. <laughs> if we can get back to fighting for just a moment. Uh, when a fight is coming up... They're laughing because they know what I'm talking about. Everybody knows what you're talking about. Uh, but when, a, when a fight is coming up, you, uh, it appears to me, deliberately build up a lot of pressure. Uh, to intimidate your opponent. And intimidate the people. See, in America, the black people are always taught to be humble. You know, yes, boss. I see you. I'm sorry. Hey, boy, break. Yes, boss. Yes, boss. And never has a slave got up and said, I am the greatest. I'm beautiful. I'm pretty. I cannot lose. He said, that nigger talks too much. <laughs> the nigger needs a good whooping, and they pay money to see me beat. And I go to the bank laughing, 100,000, 200,000, 300,000. I am the greatest. That nigger talks, he's cocky. <laughs> so like, uh, this is uh, why I build up. Like when I fought Jerry Quarry, 
I said, the last of the white hopes, you know. But I saw so you this looking, builds up. I saw you looking at Terry Quarry at the weigh-in the other night on television last month, and you were giving him this stare, and he was staring back at you. Was he frightening you, or were you frightening him, or was neither of you frightening each other? Well, I don't think neither of us was frightened, but I'm psyching him, so he lets me know he's not scared. But I don't see him or see me. I see people like you watching, but mainly in America. And they were looking and building it up to be a race war. I said, I said you don't stand a chance. I'm going to run you out of the ring. And people in Alabama, Mississippi, and Georgia, whoop that nigger. He talks too damn much. Honey, let's go see this fight. <laughs> I don't really hate nobody, but people are so small-minded, it's easy to lead them. You know, you ever see the wrestlers? How there's always a good wrestler and a bad one. Ah, and he sticks his fang in his eye, and the guy shakes it off in two minutes, his eyes clear up, and he sticks it in again, and he hits his back, and everybody hate him. He'll win the first round. And then the second round, the good fellow wins, and that's what everybody come to see, though. Bad villain be beat up. I like to be the villain. When, but the when, things I'm telling you now won't tell an America on television because they'll start liking me. They say, oh, he's just tricking us. But when I get back to America, I'll be bad. Yeah, but you, you talk to people in the ring. You appear well, to I be... I want to smile, but I don't. You, are, you appear to be talking to... <laughs> What'd you say? You appear when you're fighting. I do. Quite often. To, I do. To talk. I talk. What are you saying? Or, well, I, or can you repeat that? Well, some of them I won't repeat. Mm. But I have a few things to say, to, not for the public, but to confuse my opponent. Like I might say to a white fighter, listen, while I'm in the clinch, the Black Panther's outside. <laughs> you don't stand a damn chance tonight, boy. Now burn your house down. He look at this guy's crazy. <laughs> I have a lot of things I say. Do you ever do you ever get into the ring hating the man you're No, never, never. Never, never, never. Do you get in with anxiety or fear? I be, I'm nervous because of the talking that I do, and I have to back it up. I think about people. <laughs> I'm on a hell of a spot. I'm on a heck of a spot. Can you imagine Blue Lewis whooping me? I'd have to. Frankly, I couldn't no. go back to America. <laughs> no. Do you, I, you I have got any to... private life at all, Mohammed? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because all the time and I've I, seen I, you in Ireland, uh, yeah. up in your hotel and back and forth, people are staring at you, looking at you, wanting to touch you, wanting to talk to you. Yeah, I have private life. Well, I'm, how, you know, you're a young man of 30. This seems to be to be a perpetual trot around the world that you do with people, you know. Uh, hey. When I'm out, I rest at night, and when I'm at home, it rest, you know, like they have a saying, a prophet is never honored in his own home. Like when I leave home, I expect this, I'm new. You let me stay here one year and they get tired of me. Oh, less than that. You see me every day. I'm coming like the Beatles. When they hit America, oh, at home they were nothing. Tom Jones, when he comes to America, ah, be like, like when I come out, ah, when I go home, oh, I'm tired of that big man. <laughs> but the other day I saw... As soon as I get in. The other day I saw a small boy sparring and boxing with you and so on. Do men ever try to do this? Does a man ever come up to you and say, look, uh, I'll... If he dreamed it, he better wake up and apologize. <laughs> Never no trouble out of nobody. I don't have no trouble. Mom, are you a wealthy man? Yes. I mean, very. Are you a millionaire? Oh, two times. Are you a big spender? Do you spend yeah. a lot of money? Yeah, I'm stopping now. <laughs> yeah, I got too many cars. I got six cars, three of them Rolls Royces, which I don't need. And you know, you come up and pour and. You get something, and this is I find all of them tell me this, and you go out just to say I had it. You really don't need it. The newness wears off. You're stuck with it. You can't sell it. You depreciate. So I'm just saving money now. I have three daughters and one son, blueprints for six more children, and we want to <laughs> save all I can. So all I'm doing now, every month is saving at least 75% of my money for the future of my children, putting it away for 15 years. I don't want to touch it. I don't need it. You've said that you wouldn't uh, allow your son to become a boxer. No. Why not? 
because it's rough, it's dangerous. It's impossible for him to be as good as I am. And uh, like, uh, I want him to use his brains. I didn't stay in school like I should. I don't have the education. I have common sense. I make it. I don't have no education in books and writing. But uh, I want him to go to school and be a doctor, engineer, or maybe a lawyer, uh, something, a judge. This way he can use his brains. And while he's at youth, give him a tutor, all the teachers he need, put up all the money for all the education, where they can rely. Like, for an example, if I should lose a hand, I'm finished. Right. But a lawyer wouldn't, or a doctor wouldn't, you see, necessarily. So I want him to get his brains ready. A lot of doctors do end up broke. Are you better advised than other doctors as far as investments are concerned? Well, I'm lucky that I have these before me to take for an example. Mm. And uh, uh, I've been, I have main, mainly Herbert Muhammad, my manager, and wise advisor, the son of our great lady Elijah Muhammad. And uh, most of them were just brutes, and they didn't have a brain, and they had people who were victims of the times using them, and they couldn't box and handle the business too. But I found out that many friends and people, they come to you wanting to borrow money. This happens every day. Ninety percent of my mail from all countries is loan me some money. Or my daughter's sick. I'm trying to go through school. I want to come to America or this or that. I found out that the best thing to do is to have somebody to send them to. And he'll tell them that he can't, the budget is low. The, the other day I heard uh, <coughs> Harold Conrad refer to you as the wizard that you've got a lot of wizardry in you, that you can do a lot of things, you can see into the future, that you can put a hex on people. Well, I can take, for example, to show you my power, some silver paper. Uh, Cigarette silver, paper? Yeah, and yeah. I can uh, wet it and fold it and hand it to me. And this, is, this, is, this, is, this, is, uh, this is gold, I don't know if this will work. You have any silver paper? Might have some children. Hold on a second. Let me see. Somebody, Tom, you haven't got any. Oh, here we are. Here we are. Here we are. I can take this right here, for example. And uh, you tell the people the truth. If it don't work, I don't make a thousand. I can take this here, and I can uh, fold it up like this. And now you can give me your hand, and I can say you just watch me and you concentrate. That paper's going to get warm. So warm until it'll start smoking. And that paper will keep on until it gets hot. Do you feel it? Oh, do I feel it? <laughs> Can I just see it for a second? Somebody from the audience? So the lady come here real fast. Any lady, come here. Any lady. No. Here's one. Here we are. Come here, young lady. Here we are. Just take your hand and hold this. Straight before it cools off. Is that hot? It's quite it's hot. hot. I'm not cold. fooling. I'm not cold. fooling. Is it hot? Yeah. Is it hot? Okay. He's a wizard. Thank you. <laughs> oh, it's still hot. <clears> That's <throat> not bad. Once or twice you spoken, it seems to me sometimes sadly, about retirement. Do you still think of retirement? Oh, I wanted to, but I thought about my children. I watched the baby cry another day, and my wife was late giving the baby milk, and the baby raised hell just hollering don't know where they're going to get it but they just expect you to have it and i looked at about six more coming and i said 10 years from now i'm going to be fighting 10 years from now that baby will just be 10 years old and i'll need money you'll need school books you'll need clothes bus fare and then 20 years from now my daughter need a house or she'll need a job and it'll be shame to say muhammad ali's daughter a waitress in a restaurant he made all of those millions oh there's his son over there is a, a in here what i'm trying to say I can earn enough money in five years if I invest it and put it up right to take care of my grandchildren. So I wanted to retire, but after I see these children coming and after I see that they're going to have a hard time, maybe they won't be blessed to make it like myself, I can knock out Blue Lewis, I can go knock out Floyd Patterson, I can knock out Joe Frazier, I can come back and knock out your, and if you get your Irish champion, come knock him out, then I can go back over here and knock some, didn't get too much of a laugh on that, did I? <laughs> You're in Ireland. <laughs> Agreed. So what I'm trying to say, if I can s save off about two million dollars, which is about how many pounds? Mm, that's, uh, almost a million pounds. Almost a million. Uh, if I can save up one million pounds, then I can relax and go to sleep and retire and don't have to worry about my children because this is a hard world. Don't nobody give you nothing. You have to work for it. Right? Right. 
so I want to try, I'm blessed to be able to beat up everybody, so I want to beat up everybody until I can't beat them no more. If I can go 10 more years, I'm going to keep on doing it. Muhammad Ali, thank you very much. You're welcome.